Typical representation of the data. Now, whenever we represent the data, when it is just one quantitative variable, note it is just one quantitative variable. Okay, so let's say I have the data. How many hours per week of TV do I watch? Now, this values would vary for each person. Now, this is how I plot it. Now, one dot would represent certain number of observations there could be two observations three observations so let's say one dot represents three observation now in this case where i have drawn two dots it would represent how much it would represent six observations indicating that six hours uh, of tv per week is being watched by six people and that's how we make or explain the dot plot so in the dot plot we just mark the dot now in this case there is a outlier beyond 72 there is a dot most of the dots are from the range of 2 to 36 but one dot is very far away that is at the range of 72 now when this dot is very far away what we call it as we call it as outlier so whenever we are studying any graph, it could be a dot plot, it could be a histogram, we understand whether there are exceptions and these exceptions are understood as outliers. So how do we understand exceptions? We understand exceptions as outliers. Okay. Now, why are dot plots important? Dot plots help us in the statistical representation. It helps us in inference. Now, when we are using dot plots, we would understand that we can have values which are greater than those points, values which are less than those points or between those points. So this can be understood by counting the number of dots which are there. Now, if I don't want to count the number of dots, what is the other thing that I can do? I can have a histogram and histogram is representation in graphical format. So let's say how many online courses have you completed? Let's say uh, 140 hours of online courses have been completed by uh, this many people, this many number of courses have been completed by 10 people or 5 people and so on. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to understand the number of courses that are completed and how many people actually completed it. So what we call it as we call it as histogram. Okay, so in this section, we have understood how we graphically represent the uh, one category, uh, one uh, quantitative variable if present. Now, once we have the representation, again in this diagram, as you can see, 70, there is some value with 70. Most of the values are from 0 to 30. That means 70 is what? 70 is again a outlier. Now, Let's say I understand, uh, I, I explained you what is the outlier. So any extreme score which is present and this score would influence the value of the correlation definitely. So this outliers could be univariate or bivariate. Univariate means when there is just one variable, it could be exceptionally high, it could be exceptionally low. And based on that, uh, when we would talk further about the normal distribution curve, we would say mean plus minus one standard deviation, mean plus minus two standard deviation and mean plus minus three standard deviation. So on a normal probability curve that we draw, if it is the mean which is in the center, if it is one standard deviation plus or minus, that makes it 68%. Okay. If it is two standard deviation, plus minus the mean, it is 95%. If it is three standard deviation plus minus the mean, it is 99% coverage. Now, if any value lies beyond that 95 or 99%, we call this as an outlier. However, there could be a scatter plot diagram. Now, a scatter plot diagram could be, let's say, between performance and ability. So I have a plot between performance and ability. Now here I have two variables that I have used. Now when there are two variables and I plot an extreme low value or an extreme high value and remaining values are here and on the scatter plot. So this extreme value of low ability, low performance and extreme value of high ability, high performance would be what? Would be bivariate outlier because there are more than one variables which are involved. So it's both the per performance and the ability which is involved. So two variables when they are involved, we call it as a bivariate outlier. If it is just one variable which is involved, we call it as a univariate outlier. Clear? 
So we have understood what are outliers, the types of outliers. Thank you.